Hey family, this is Darlene. I am working on some hoop earrings. I was thinking I have a, well, it's not a store on eBay, but I have an eBay account. And what I do is I shop not all the time, but enough to remember my password when I log into eBay. So I thought to myself, if I shop on eBay every once in a while, I can also sell on eBay. So my thought is to go ahead and begin populating my uh, eBay seller's portal with uh, hoop earrings. So I figure I'll go on camera and show you how I make these little cute lightweight hoop earrings. These are made from 18 gauge gold tone uh, wire. And these are very lightweight. I mean, just really easy and simple. And, you know, you'll never even know they're on your ears. So, and I tend to like them with, with these little grooves on the side. I don't know what you call them, but I like to put the little indent indentions on the side just to give it a little bit more character. So I'm going to show you how I make these earrings using this bottle. Uh, and this bottle is, uh, well, it has face wash in it. So I'm going to use this bottle and I'm only going to use this bottle because I want the shape of the bottle to create the earring. And I'm sure there is some type of something that can be bought at the store <laughs> to get the shape for the wire. But at one time, I had the, the big metal thing that you use for hoop earrings. But the wire slides off. So I don't want the wire to slide off. I need the wire to stay on and do what I ask it to do. And with this plastic bottle, it does exactly that. Uh, because I kind of tighten the wire around the bottle, you got to kind of work with it to get it off of the bottle. And that's fine too, because the further down you put it, the easier it is or less time it takes to get it, get the wire off of the bottle. So I'm going to show you guys how I do that. And I'll probably just do one pair on camera because I'm going to try to get, I want to say I can actually put 200 items and I think I'm going to work on trying to get at least 200 items in there and just kind of leave them there and see if anything, anything happens. And if it does, I'll just keep putting inventory. So I'm going to go ahead and that's the first wire. And of course, you want to do the best you can to make them as even as you possibly can. But it don't always turn out like that because sometimes I could sit here. And I could be making jewelry for hours and I will measure the wire exactly right. I will do everything exactly. And those two earrings will not come out the same. I don't know if that's the law of making handmade jewelry or not, but it happens to me. So, and I mean, I could, I could be doing this for hours measure, not measuring, but exactly like I would. What I just did, I made these exactly the same length and chances are they're not going to come out exactly the same. And, I, and I'm cool with that because it's handmade jewelry. So this is what I do. I take the wire and I try to straighten it out a little bit because anytime you apply, your fingers produce heat. So anytime you're applying the heat to the metal or the wire, it should help to straighten it out a little bit. And it does. So I'm going to take the wire and I am going to measure it about here. Okay, so. It's wrapped around the bottle. And what I'm going to do is begin to tighten it. 
So that means twisting the wire around. Right? And I just want to wrap all that extra wire around just like that. And then I want to get my little pliers and finish wrapping and tucking because I'm going to use this wire, this extra wire will continue to wrap around here and I'll show you what I'm going to do in a minute. So that's wrapped. And then what happens is it tightens the wire around the bottle and therein is the struggle and trying to get the wire off at least one of the struggles because what's going to happen now I'll take my pliers and I want to put those little dents so I put it in and I twist however you want to section it and then twist you want to take it twist go down twist Go down, grab the wire, twist. Go down, grab the wire, twist. Here, twist. Grab the wire, twist. Grab the wire, twist. Grab the wire, twist. You want to grab the wire, twist. Grab the wire and twist. And we'll do it about right there. And if you can, you can see how tight it is around the bottle. So therein is the struggle to get the wire off of the bottle. You can probably see that's why my nails look like this, but that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and begin to try to get this off. And it's just a matter of just moving it down and moving it down. That's why you want to come as close to the end of the bottle or whatever it is that you're using as pos as much as you possibly can so the struggle is less to get the wire off so I'm just gonna push and push and we'll push and it should be coming off at any moment there we go so you can see this is what I want it and I like it to have like those little indentions or grooves in the wire. And it just gives it a little bit more character to the earring when you got those little grooves in there like that. Because I love hoops. I will wear a hoop any day of the week. Um, and I like them when they're uh, regular hoops are cool too. But I like them when they have that little extra personality to them, which is what these do. So then I'm going to take it right here where the wrapping is and put my fingers and I'm going to bend the wire over and it should end up like this. And it's going to end up like that because we're going to make a hoop. So we'll bend it and you can see it looks like that. And we want to wrap one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight. And we want to do that because we're going to use this wire, the extra, to create some type of little design in here. But before I do that, I'm going to kind of straighten this up and turn this part. So you can see it gave us the shape we want. And then um, I think I want to take this around one more time. So one more time. And then I'm going to take the wire and I'm going to begin to of course, bend. And if you've been around any for any time, you know I like bending wire. So I'm going to bend it because I want some design in the middle of the earring. I'm going to bend it. 
and then we'll bend it. And we'll bend it. And we'll bend it. And one last time. And you can see already how that's starting to look like an earring. So what I want to do is I want to put something at the end here. So let's see what we want to put at the end right here. Let's use one of these elephants. And then what we want to do is I'm going to have to cut some of this. I'm going to cut a little bit of that wire. And then we want to fold this over to close it. And then that's what we just did. Simple, easy, just straight to the point. And it's almost like you just got to find creative ways, you know, like to, to make the jewelry. Um, and I'll go into like these craft stores or I'll go online looking for, you know, little pieces and equipment to help me create the jewelry. But sometimes the prices that they're asking for that stuff, I'm not going to pay that. When I could find a different way, I'm kind of thrifty like that, y'all. So don't tell nobody. <laughs> okay. But my thought is if I don't have to pay the money for it, and if it does not make sense to me, I'm not going to spend the money for it. So if I could figure out a way, you know, to create what it is that I want to create without having, you know, to spend all that money, that's what I'm going to do. And that's what it's all about, right? So in that case, that is why we are sitting here using... A face wash bottle, right? Plastic. And that's what we're going to do. And we don't want to say the name of it because they're not paying us. So, okay. Okay, and this is the first earring. And then uh, what we could have done, too, though, is kind of ran beads all along here, just like kind of here. So if you put one here, once you bend it, it would lock the bead in. So then when you uh, go here... You put a bead or however you put it like here and then bend and it locks the beads in. So then that way you kind of got a rainfall of beads going down and you can put, you know, a bead at the end of it just for more accent to make it look really, you know, even more nice. So let's put a hook on here. Yeah, and they're allowing me 200 items on that eBay. And I said, you know what? I didn't even know people still shop on eBay, right? But I'm going to take my chances. So isn't that pretty already? Look at that. Out of a bottle. And all we really needed was the shape from the plastic bottle. That's all we needed was the shape. So you can almost use like anything. Uh, oh, anything in a sense watch. This is my uh, multivitamin <laughs> bottle. And I use this bottle to create uh, circle earrings, the big hoop earrings. I will make a hoop earring using this bottle in a minute. And it gives me a perfect circle. Okay? So it's just a matter of getting the wire around. Um positioning it right, twisting the wire around it, and just kind of as you work with it, be sure that you don't bend the wire when you're making them as regular hoops without indentions or anything. Because, you know, you want a perfect hoop as possibly as you can get. So I use my multivitamin bottle to create hoops. And again, I'm sure there are tools out there and equipment and all kinds of stuff that you can buy in order to make a perfect hoop. But guess what? My vitamin bottle does the same thing. So, um, that's the, let me see, do I want to create the other one on here too? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So, here's our bottle. And we want to wrap our wire. So, you want to take it around. 
and get it as even as we possibly can. And then you want to pull it tight as you can because when you wrap up here, you don't want any snugness or looseness. So I tend to just kind of as tight as I can wrap it. Straighten out your wire and then we just take it around. A lot of times I'll use the uh, 16 gauge gold tone wire just because it's, uh, I don't know, it gives it a a richer look, a nicer look sometimes when it when the heavier wire is used. But then the, there are times when, you know, the 18 gauge just works. And then some people like lighter versus the heavier earring and that's okay so I like to kind of have some variations whenever I sell so if you like heavier then that's the 16 gauge if you like lighter then that's the 18 gauge and you can always tell the difference between the two too so in this case we're going to take it grab the wire and twist grab the wire twist grab the wire twist grab the wire twist grab the wire twist and if you grab it too tightly, what will happen is, and you're trying to turn it, the pliers will slip off and it'll put a little scratch or something on the wire. So I try to be careful. It don't always work, but hey, we want to grab the wire and twist. And grab the wire, twist. Grab the wire, twist. Grab, twist. Grab, twist. Grab twist. And the more you do it, the faster you'll be able to do it too. You'll be like, oh, I done did 10 of those in 30 minutes. I'm exaggerating, but you will be able to do <laughs> a lot more than, you know, what you would normally do when you first start. Okay, so you can see how tight that is. And it's tight around there because of me twisting the wire, which made it tighter on the bottle. And that's cool because we're going to go ahead and... See, herein is the struggle. And just kind of slide it off. And when I do the hoop earrings, the round hoop earrings with the multivitamin bottle, I always leave a little looseness, just a slight loo looseness at the top because when I take the wire off, the rounded, if I'm not careful, it will bend the wire and it takes away from that perfect circle. So in that case, I don't do it as tight as what I do it on here. So with this one, it's okay if it happens to get um, a little dent or something because it's already dented. So it really wouldn't make, make a difference. So there we go. And again, that's why you want to make sure it's as close to the bottom as you can possibly get it. So you don't have to go through all that struggle. So, let's see. They look about the same to me. Right? Okay, so we're going to take it with my fingers. So I hold it right here and I'll bend it over like so and then I want to create a hoop yep and those are about the same and I want to straighten this up a little bit and then I want to wrap two three four I don't remember how many times I wrap a four uh, five, six, seven, maybe eight. And that looks about the same. And then we want to, remember, we want to begin to bend. And bend. Uh, two, four, five, six. 
six, two. six. So let's see what we get and if it matches. That looks good to me. And it's probably as close as, uh, about as close as we're going to get it. So, let's do six, and we'll do seven, and then we'll put it on here. So with this, I'm going to have to cut. I think I did that on the last one, too. So it don't matter. Um, you can always, and that's the thing about wire. When you do the wrapping and, you know, the kind of swirl with it, if it's not the same length, you can always adjust it. You can pull it. You can kind of bend it back just to try to make it be exact to the same length as possible to the other one. So you can see how this would, you know, this would work. So do this. And we're going to put this one here. And I'm going to have to cut some of this off because it's too long. And I'm going to think about right here. And watch this wire when you clip it because this stuff will shoot somewhere and you think it might go forward and it'll come back and all that old craziness. So just kind of figure out a way when you clip, you know, maybe put your finger against the wire and then clip it, you know, or hold it, the whatever it is, the bead. And then you can hold it like kind of downwards away from you and clip it and it'll go into whatever. But be careful with this wire. It don't be playing. It likes to fight. So let's see. I think I might need to. Well, no, that's probably right. So we'll go ahead and close it off. And you want to make sure that it's closed. Right? Because you don't want to lose no beads, especially if you're making jewelry and you're planning on selling it. I don't want nobody calling you tomorrow. I lost my bead. No, you didn't. Mm -hmm. I closed that off. I hope you didn't lose that bead. What was you doing? Okay. Okay, so we'll bend it. I see sometimes you got to kind of manipulate it, play with it, do what you got to do. Okay. And then I want to twist this around. Like so. So this would be the second one. And let's put Oh, and I was gonna tell you guys, I heard you um when you said that you can't see when I'm doing certain things, making the jewelry, I have a table tripod coming in and then I'm ordering some other equipment so I can try to do a little bit better as far as uh, catching angles and all that different stuff so you guys can see what I'm actually doing. So I try to do pretty good by being in the camera, but I do understand that sometimes my hand may hide something and be in the way. So I want you to know I'm working on that. So, these are the earrings. How cute, right? And we made these with, with some bottles, with a bottle. We made these with a bottle.
with a bottle, a plastic, an empty plastic bottle, right? And how cute are they? How cute are they? And see, I will wear these and I will wear these out because I like hoop earrings. And like I said, I like different earrings. I like uh, earrings that are, uh, you know, they have personality. They have a lot of character to them. Just really different where everybody is not, you know, wearing the same. I went to a, it was a woman's conference and... They had vendors there, and it was probably four vendors that were selling the $5 jewelry. And most of them had pretty much the same items. And I thought to myself, how unfortunate that is. It's like, I don't ever want to walk into a place <laughs> and somebody got on the same necklace, the same bracelet, the same earrings that I'm wearing. And that's all. That's what it's all about. It's about being individual. It's about expressing your personality. It's about uh, color and pop and, you know, just variation. And just think about how different we are as individuals, as people. And a lot of times, especially like with millennials or younger people or anybody who believes in expressing themselves through dress, that is generally how we express ourselves outside of our speech and, you know, our beliefs and things is through our dress. Because if I don't engage you and have a conversation with you, you have no idea, you know, the capacity of my mental intelligence, right? But guess what? It could be expressed in our dress, be it like with color, with uh, a certain style or different things like that. So there is no way I would want to be running around dressed like anybody, wearing the same earrings or the same. That's why a lot of what I make are um, one of a kind. But when it comes to the, you know, the earrings like this, they're one of a kind. This style is going to be the same as far as the hoop. But here with the bead, it will have a different bead like it is with these. So if you can see on here, this one has, I think it's called the lucky tree. And then on this one, you have the little elephant. So the bead at the bottom is going to be different. But yet the hoop part will more than likely be the same only because it makes sense you know, to create this type of style over and over, but then add some variation in the sense of the bead. And I can also work with the wire to make the wire look a little bit more different than what the wire will look like on these earrings right here. Aren't these nice though? And we made these using a plastic bottle. Okay. Uh, that's it for now. If you're a subscriber, you know what, my people, thank you so much. You are my people. You are so my people, okay? Because there are like a million channels on YouTube that you could be, you know, visit. Well, I'm sure you do. But, you know, just the thought of you making comments and liking and watching the video. I am so in love with y'all. I am so in love with y'all, okay? Thank you so much. And I was bragging about my little 200 subscribers, right? It's hard to get 200 subscribers, trust me. That is not easy to be getting 200 subscribers, okay? Well, over 200 uh, subscribers. So I'm looking forward to getting more subscribers and, um, you know, just making more videos. Um, I got uh, a haul coming in. I got some new beads coming in. I got a lot of good stuff that's coming in where, oh, man, this stuff is going to be popping. Y'all going to be like, ooh, Darlene, send me that, okay? I mean, the beads are beautiful, The just everything. And um, I got some good stuff planned for you guys. So again, thanks for stopping by. And I'm not on camera today because this is Saturday and this is do what you will day. That means a sister don't have no clothes on. Okay. Well, I got on clothes, but you know, I'm not cute. So thanks for stopping by. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Like if you like. Comment if you have a question. And I'll do my best to answer the question. Um, there's a number of questions, which are the same questions, where I'm being asked what type of um, cord that I'm using for uh, the bracelets. I use one millimeter clear cable cord.
the jewelry cord and the brand, I believe, I don't want to say the brand, but anyway, it's, um, I think I added the link somewhere in here, but I generally use the one millimeter and I only use the brand that I use because I've been using this brand like for years. I mean, like for years and I've tried other, uh, stretch cord and it just didn't hold up. And one thing about when you're making the braces with that stretch cord, you want to kind of pre-stretch it, give it a little stretch because if you've ever had a stretch bracelet and you've worn it and eventually it kind of stretches like where it gets too big, that's cheap cord or, <laughs> or it hasn't been pre-stretched. So you want to pre-stretch it and then you want to make sure to get a really good brand of cord because trust me, all cord is not good cord. My, my mother used to say all gold is not good gold. In this sense, all cord uh, stretch cord is not good stretch cord. So with that, you want to be, you know, careful about that and just, uh, give a pre-stretch or something. But anyway, oh, I'm just talking today, right? My subscribers. Hey, my people. Okay. But anyway, this is Darlene, Jury by BDK. Uh, thanks for stopping by. We'll talk soon.